Jesus said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ, the same. That means what he did then, he's doing today. If he healed before, he's still healing. If he opened blind eyes, he's still opening blind eyes. If he made the lame to walk, that's not beyond his capability. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I speak by the Spirit of God. There is a fresh wind that's about to blow. There's a fresh wave that's about to come in. And the church shall rise up. It'll not be the masses, but it'll be a remnant. Those that don't have illusions of grandeur. Those that are not concerned about size, reputation, or finances. But there will come a remnant in the body of Christ that will be raising up and launching people out to the nations of the world. Not concerned about what ministry name is on it, but just concerned about whose name it's in. It's the name of Jesus. Good evening. We want to welcome you to Spirit Living. We are so glad to have you tuned in, watching, and uh, we are going to continue along the lines of how to be led by the Spirit of God. It's so awesome to know that we can be led. We can know the voice of God. We can know and recognize how He leads us. It's a growing process. You know, we're not going to hit it every time, perhaps, but we can't be intimidated by the thought of being led by the Spirit of God either because it's more natural than we think. It's more natural. It's not difficult. God never, ever planned to make anything hard. Right. Aren't we glad about that? <laughs> yes. So, yes. but he said that we know his voice <laughs> if we are his sheep and we can expect to be led by the Spirit of God. I don't know. I don't know where we'd be if we couldn't be led. Oh. We'd be in trouble. Our whole life has literally mm -hmm. been centered on making sure that we're led by the Spirit of God. Yeah, it sure has. It sure has. Anything, we're just saying, any, anything in our lives mm -hmm. that's working, it's because somehow God was able to get across to us what His will and plan was. And we were able to figure out how to follow that. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and uh, if it's not working, we probably blew it. But yep. if it is working, yep. it's because the Holy Ghost guided yeah. us. Yeah. So, uh, and what he does for us, just know this going into this, <laughs> whatever he's, stories we're going to share with you and what he's done for us, he'll do it for you too. It's not because we're ministers. It's not because of, you know, we pastor a church or we yeah. travel the nations. That has absolutely nothing to do with it. It's because we're a child of God. And we know his voice. We're learning all the time better and better. But we can sure. know his voice. And that's why we can be led. Mm -hmm. And that's why you can be led. In every decision that you make, I think establishing that fact mm -hmm. that I yep. can be led. I can literally be led by the Spirit of God. It's not woo-woo. It's not the super, super, just supernatural, strange, super weird. Spiritual. Super spiritual. That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. It's very natural. Yeah. It should be as natural for us to be led by the Spirit of God as it is for us to breathe. And you should be really doing yourself a favor. You should be to yourself on a regular basis. Yeah. You should be saying, I'm led by the Holy Ghost. Yes. I'm always in the right place Absolutely. at the right time. I'm led by the Spirit of God. I'm a child of God. Yeah. Don't go by what you have or haven't done in the past, where it's yeah. worked or hasn't worked. Uh, set, your, set your words in line with God's word. Yes, because if we're saying, I never, I never know what to do. I always make the wrong decisions. As long as those words are coming out of our mouth right. on a consistent basis, we are going to continue making the wrong decisions. Yeah. And so we have to line our words up with what we believe and what we desire to see come to pass. Yeah. And so, yeah, what we're saying makes all the difference in the world. All the difference yeah. in the world. You know, people, well, so, uh, it's never worked, never worked. Joel 3.10 says, let the weak say, I'm strong. Mm -hmm. Don't say what you got, say what you want. You know, well, it's never worked for me. Well, about time it started then. Yep, as good as time as ever. I'm, I'm needing God to help me. Well, sometimes God, God's needing you to help Him. Yeah. And uh, He'll give you the Word. Mm -hmm. He'll give you the Holy Ghost. He'll, give, he'll have a plan. Just needs you to cooperate. Yeah, and and good. the only condition, the only condition that I can find is you don't have to be a spiritual giant. God doesn't have a caste system. This won't work until you've got, you know, 40 years in the kingdom. It, the only condition that is a necessity is to be a child of God. That's right. That's and the right. minute you're a child of God, instantly the capacity is yeah. indwelling. Mm -hmm. Greater is he that's in you than he that's mm -hmm. in the world. You got a guide inside. You're a guide for life. You know, I mean, we go places and we try to find Siri on our phone and she, some, she leads us the wrong place sometimes. You know, it gets us in a mess. But I'll tell you what, the guide in the phone is nothing compared to the guide you got on the inside. Right. 
and he never he never leaves you forsakes yeah. you it's like having a, a supernatural compass yeah a compass on the inside that will lead you we start off going in a different direction a little bit you'll know on the inside yeah there's a knowing on the inside you know what something about this just isn't right we need to pay attention to those things mm -hmm. we need to learn to recognize what that which way that compass is pointing yeah. so yeah. thank god for oh. the holy ghost yeah yeah you know there's so many facets of it you know i mean i like to look at it like a light system red yellow green um going along and all of a sudden something's just like a yellow light inside something doesn't seem right mm -hmm. Well, what does that mean? Does it mean I'm a bad person? No, it means maybe slow down and proceed with caution. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm on the right path, but I'm on the wrong time. Maybe I need to slow it down into something. Or, man, all of a sudden, something doesn't seem right. Mm -hmm. What do I do? Follow that. Yeah. If it doesn't seem right, my goodness. Um, I remember um, my dad, was when he was teaching me to drive many years ago, I can still remember we were out in the country, middle of nowhere, driving, and he said, just always remember what, when you, if you don't know what else to do, just stop. <laughs> just stop. And I thought, well, that's pretty easy. Mm -hmm. And I used that a lot through, <laughs> through my life. But that's the way it is. It's like all of a sudden, well, something doesn't seem right. Well, stop for a minute until you find out why. Mm -hmm. doesn't mean you have to change your whole life. Just put on your spiritual brakes for a minute and go, God, something doesn't seem right. Mm -hmm. do, is, something isn't right. Do I, what do I, what do I, what is there, is there something that's trying to mess me up out here? Let me know. But, you know, you keep following the, the, the red and the, gr and the yellow, be before long you'll be walking in the green. That's right. So, so anyway, well, you know, um, on that subject, there's, there's so many facets of being led. Like, you know, we've, we've talked about uh, over the past, we've talked about, uh, you know, people say, well, I, you know, I just feel like God never talks to me. He never said he'd talk to you, but he always said he'd guide you. Yeah. Okay, I think, well, I'm looking for a voice. You may not get one. You may spend your whole life never hearing the voice of God. I'm glad when I don't. Usually if I hear the voice of God, it's because I'm headed into a mess and God's really, really trying to help me out of that. It's a whole lot better just to be able to go. I, don't, I haven't heard the voice of God, the booming supernatural voice of God, but there's just this witness of the Spirit, this still small voice. And boy, you, you get to where you get so sensitive to that. doesn't matter where you are in the world. You've got your guide inside. And uh, but but there's different facets of it. We, you, you can describe it different ways. Um, um, you know, I, uh, I I like to look at, at being led by the spirit of God as like a uh, scavenger hunt. Now, I kind of don't like to because I don't like scavenger hunts. I never have liked those games. But you don't like any games. No, I'm not real big on games. That's <laughs> probably you're probably right on that. <laughs> but but in the things of God, the being led by the Holy Ghost, sometimes if we can put a natural side on these things, mm -hmm. um, uh, like a scavenger hunt. Scavenger hunt says, uh, there's, there's, a, a, there's a place I want to cross. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to a finish line. And I may not be the first one there, but I just there's certain things I need to pick up to cross the finish. I, if I don't pick up the stuff along the way, I don't win when I cross the finish line. And sometimes in that game, Sometimes you'll get a list of things and they look absolutely worthless and they seem like they're worthless, but they must be worth something important because you have to have those to cross the finish line. You might have to have a broken pencil. You might have to have an old worn out tire. There may be things you're going, why? I, I don't know why I need this. I just need this. But, you know, following the, the leading of the Spirit of God, sometimes, sometimes God will lead you backward to get you forward. Sometimes he'll lead you north to get you south. Sometimes he'll lead you east to get you west. You know, our job is not to follow what, what looks like it's the most important. Our job is to follow what is what is God saying. And, and sometimes if we'll follow him, sometimes he'll have a stop off in life. And we get done and we'll go, I don't know. I, boy, I thought God led me to that situation. But it, there sure wasn't anything to it. It didn't it didn't produce anything. But maybe it maybe you took a... a uh, a little layover somewhere and in that maybe you made a connection maybe you met a person maybe you made a divine contact you might not know it for years but i'll tell you what there's something about following the leading of the spirit of god and and even if you get into a place and go well that sure wasn't worth much it doesn't mean you missed it yeah. maybe it means you picked something up you didn't know you're going to need to pick up yeah so. i think that's how it was when i graduated high school yeah. Uh, my mom and dad wanted me to go to a junior college right there in Pensacola. Mm -hmm. 
but I had something in my heart about going to this school in um, Waxahachie, Texas, mm -hmm. of all places. And so um, after working on them for a while to get them to agree, <laughs> I just knew that I knew that's the school I needed to go to. There was a school in Lakeland, Florida mm -hmm. I could have gone to, mm -hmm. but for some reason I had to go to that school in Waxahachie, Texas because the Holy Ghost wanted me to meet some people. Yeah. He had something waiting for me there at that school, and it was like, that scavenger hunt. So he, but he didn't tell you what no, you No, I do. had no idea yeah. why I felt like I needed to go to that school. None whatsoever. Yeah. But I knew that I did. And when I got there, God connected me with some other students uh, who shared, shared um, teachings from the Word that just it was like the light bulb went off on the inside of me. I yeah. remember the first book I read was called Right and Wrong Thinking. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. literally turn my life upside down. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, Lance, it does matter what I think because what I think I'm going to eventually say. So what I th I've got to make sure that I'm thinking right because if I don't think right, I'm not going to talk right. So that whole, it just opened the doors to uh, God's plan for my life for the next step. But that was my first, I had to pick that up. I had to make those connections. Yeah. Um, my, my God's plan for my life depended on it. It did. It, mm -hmm. and how much it did. Mm. Wow. But stopping off there mm -hmm. changed the course of your life, yeah. uh, which you may not have known. Mm -mm. But then the next thing, he led you to to get around Brother Hagen, mm -hmm. to get around Rayma. Mm -hmm. um, and then mm -hmm. that was going to be important. Mm -hmm. But at the year he led you to go to Rayma was the year he dealt with me to leave youth pastoring and come back to Tulsa to go to work for Brother Hagen, mm -hmm. God God moved heaven and earth to get us in the same place at the same yeah, time. Yeah, pretty wild. It's pretty wild, yeah. Pretty, and we had no clue what was happening. No. You know, we we're just walking along, just trying mm -hmm. to be at the right place at the right Mind time. Minding our own business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's, you know, I, I can still remember, um, I was working for Brother Hagen. It would have been 1976, I think it was. Um, and um, joining him in um, Houston, Texas, John Osteen's church. Mm -hmm. um, we were on our way down there. We we're going to run the meeting for him, run the book and tape tables and all that. And um, he, uh, um, on the way down there, it just rose up in me that I, I all of a sudden, I just had this sudden desire to be a, a youth pastor in a church. I thought, dear Lord, the two things I don't want to do. I don't want to be a youth. I don't want to work <laughs> with kids. I used to be a kid. I don't want to work with kids. <laughs> don't want to work in a church. I want to travel. I want to be a road minister. But by the time I got to Houston, I found myself, found myself God, God won't break your will. He won't make you do anything. But if you walk with him, he'll help you get your will in the right place. Yeah. I, fr I went from not wanting to do it by the 500 miles. By the time I got to Houston, I found myself saying, Lord, uh, give me a place to be a youth pastor. Mm -hmm. Long story short, I ended up in Colorado just a few months later. A uh, youth pastor, I was there for 13 months. And, and uh, after 13 months, God really, really strongly dealt with me to go back to um, Tulsa. Go back to, go back to my old job. Why go back to my old job? That's going backward to get forward. Well, doesn't matter. I get back there, and of course, that's the year you're, no, was that the next year you came into school? I think. Mm -hmm. You came into school the next year, when we met the next year. Um, I needed to be at school. She needed to be at school for God to have us meet, to launch us out into what we've been doing for 45 years mm -hmm. now. But, but um, you know, I got back here and, and, and loved youth pastoring, uh, had a wonderful time. I'd have done it the rest of my life at that point. But I, a pastor called, wanted me to be a youth pastor at his church in another state. And I was ready to take it. I thought that'll be great. And I told him, I said, but I better pray about it. I prayed, wasn't 10 minutes praying. And the Spirit of God rose up in me and he said, no, don't take that. He said, I haven't called you to do that. You'll never youth pastor again. I've never called you to be a youth pastor. I said, well, don't, well if you didn't call me to be a youth pastor, why did I spend 13 months in Colorado as a youth pastor? Why did you supernaturally send me to do something you didn't call me to do. Sometimes God will tell you to do something he didn't call you to do. Mm -hmm. You get hold of that, it'll change your life. Sometimes he'll give you the direction to do something, even if it's not, if it's not part of your call. Well, I just never, I, th I said, Lord, I don't understand it. 
down the road, I looked back, and I thought, why the 13 months in Colorado? And all of a sudden, one day, I looked up, and I thought, I thought, half of what we're doing around the world, the schools we had, the places we're going, the churches we go to in the States, a majority of where we've been and what we've done, a whole lot of that was in connection with people that were in my youth group. Yeah. Uh, just yesterday, um, saw somebody that uh, was in that youth group. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hear, I just, I hear from somebody every now and then, somebody will call me, was in that youth group. Uh, I've got friends that run schools and run churches and pastor churches mm-hmm. all over nations all over the world churches all all over the America. I look back and think one one 13 month stop didn't make any sense to me, but it was picking up equipment yeah. that helped us to f- cross our finish line. Yeah. Absolutely. So so crazy. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, you just don't know. Mm-hmm. And the wildest if you remember, I was traveling with the CN group from that college in Texas, the Bible school in Texas, and we were uh, on a summer tour and we went to speak at this church in Colorado, <laughs> and the pastor started talking about his youth pastor that went to this co- school called Rama, and uh, but he was out of town that weekend. And fast forward, uh, months and months later after yeah. we met, you were the youth pastor. <laughs> that was at that church that I was singing in that weekend, and um, just it's just amazing those no connections, idea. those yeah. connections, the connections that I made. Um, as 18, 19 year yeah. old, those are con- many of those connections I still have today. Yeah. They were God connections that those connecting with those friends, connecting yeah. with those people helped get me where I needed to get. And they didn't even realize mm. it. They had no clue, but God had a plan. Mm. God always has a plan. I love the fact that he's, he's never like, oh, what do we do next? He's <laughs> always got a plan. Yeah. And it's up to us to follow that plan. And we never, we usually don't know that's what's going on. No. We're never going, oh, uh, this was just a no. divine connection. It's like no. so many times. No. So many times we look, pff, you know, just yeah. don't know what, just don't know what this is all about. Yeah. And sometimes they end up being uh, uh, lifetime connections. Mm-hmm. Lifetime feelings. I remember being on the road with Brother Hagen, 19, goodness, it would have been 1975, 76 maybe, 75. Um, and he had a guy come play the piano for the meetings, uh, a, the son of a good friend of his. And and uh, just met the kid. He's just a kid. Met this kid, you know, didn't think anything of it. Um, he and his wife now are dear friends of ours, Reverend David Horton, David and Scarlett Horton, had pastor church in Florida and traveled the nations of the world and did had no idea that this scrawny kid mm-hmm. at this meeting at Agnes Scott College yeah. in, in Georgia was going to end up being a lifetime friend, mm-hmm. um, a, uh, a, a an interesting connection. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But none of us knew that, no. had no idea. Mm-mm. And you could go through life. Most of our connections are, it's a scavenger hunt. Mm-hmm. How yeah. much have we picked up that we still don't know how important it yeah. was? Yeah. So, so uh, anything else you want to add in there? Mm-mm. And, uh, you know, finish up with the basis of um, another good description of how God leads. Um, you know, sometimes we're, we're so busy looking for God to tell us what something is. When a lot of times, he doesn't tell us what it is. He tells us what it's not. Yeah, that's good. You go back to First Samuel 16th chapter. Um, you know, King Saul had, he disqualified himself to be king. So God sent Samuel a prophet. He said, I've got somebody else chosen. Interesting. He said, I got somebody else chosen to take his place. Mm-hmm. But he didn't tell him who it was. No. He's a prophet. He should know everything. <laughs> he didn't. Didn't tell him who it was, and he said, uh, "He said, go to go to Jesse's house. Go to Jesse's house and anoint his son." Mm-hmm. Well, he goes to Jesse's house, and what he didn't know was Jesse had seven sons. Mm-hmm. And he goes in there. See if I can get through this again. He goes in and mm-hmm. y- y- <laughs> and er- <laughs> everything. You know, you got you got systems in there. You're gonna. It's gonna always be the oldest. It's gonna be the one with the you know, the grace and the favor on him. So he goes in, and, and his oldest son was Eliab. Here we go. <laughs> and he, Eliab was a head above everybody else. He was good looking. He was, he was, he was the guy with the favor. Mm-hmm. And the prophet goes in. He goes, 
Eliab's there. Surely God's anointed stands before him. He's going to anoint him with oil, anoint him to be king. And the Lord speaks to him and says, no, he's not it. Mm -hmm. He didn't say who it was. He said who it wasn't. Mm -hmm. It's not him. You, you look on the outside, I look on the heart. Mm -hmm. Okay, Eliab. And, and then the next one was uh, uh, Abinadab. I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> Second son. Well, maybe it's Abinadab. The Holy Ghost says, the Lord speaks to him says, no, it's not him either. And then there's Shama. Let's bring Shama up here. The Lord says, no, it's not him either. Went through all f six sons. Mm -hmm. Finally, it, God never told him who it was. He just kept telling him who it wasn't. Mm -hmm. That could be frustrating. Mm -hmm. He gets to the very end. He says, to, he says to Jesse, you got any more sons? Because I have gone through every son you got. And all God says is he's not the one. He goes, well, well, yeah, I, I, well, I got one more. I forgot. He's so unimportant. He's so, uh, he's so unknown. He's the scrawny runt of the litter. He's out taking care. The father didn't even bring him in to meet with the prophet. He was so unworthy. <laughs> and least likely. And least likely. Unqualified. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. He said, well, bring him in. I'm not sitting down to eat until we find out what's going on here. <clears throat> so he brings David in. David comes in, <laughs> and the Lord says, that's the anointed, rise and anoint him. Yeah. So the least likely, the least qualified, and I'm sure, I'm sure the other brothers thought, Who, what's with the runt? <laughs> yeah. what's, he's, he, is, he is our royal pain. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, he anoints him. And, of course, David becomes the one after God's own heart, mm -hmm. the, <clears throat> the greatest king that he ever really had under that covenant. Yeah. And, and the least likely. But he went through every sign. And God never told him who it was. He just kept telling him who it wasn't. And sometimes, you know, in life, sometimes you, God's leading you somewhere. And, you, you know, you try this door, and it just doesn't work. And you try this door, it just doesn't work. When we were looking for a building for our church, oh, my. oh man. We looked, we talked to real estate agents. We looked at every building in the city. We looked at dumpy buildings. We put offers on buildings. Mm -hmm. And we looked all over the city of Tulsa. We had a building picked out. Uh, on 21st Street, knew that was it, just knew that was it, couldn't get the guy to sell it to us, mm -hmm. and we went, and, and, but we'd look building after building after building after building, and all we'd ever get was no, no, we tried to buy a ice skating rink, yeah. mm -hmm. could you imagine, ice skating rink, mm -hmm. that floor would have been cold all the time, <laughs> we, we just, and we, we what, two years, mm -hmm. we spent two years looking at every building, yeah. we lived, we finally lived by the, um, um, uh, the game, hot, hot, cold. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we'd drive around the city. We'd go, oh, cold, 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 cold. We'd turn and go another way. We'd go, well, warm, that's warmer. Just on the inside. We'd get into a particular area. That's yeah, getting warmer. We couldn't find anything. And all of a sudden, long story very short, there was a friend of ours that had built this beautiful building as a missions museum. Gorgeous place, 14 acres, um, uh, seven um, bungalows for missionaries to live in. <laughs> Built this amazing place, okay? And through a seri <coughs> series of events, um, they lost it to the bond company. And a guy that was in our church at the time called me up and said, Pastor, just thought I'd let you know that so-and-so built had that property. I said, yeah. And said it went back to the bond company. Yeah, well, uh, it's going on the market this next week. I thought you might want to know about that. I said, no, I'm not interested. We're not interested. Too much money, too small, everything. And um, we were at a meeting in Texas, and the, just sitting in the service. And it rose up on the inside, go back to Tulsa and buy that property. Yeah. I don't want it to go back to the world. That's what we heard. And we came back, and, and we spent two years, no, no, no. We, every door we tried was no. It was like... Uh, Eliab and Abinadab and Shama. Yeah. It was like all the brothers. And it was like, no, 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 no. We're starting to think maybe we're just crazy. We missed God. Until all of a sudden we walked into the place we're in right now. How many years ago? Mm. Many. Mm -hmm. And it was just as, just all of a sudden we just knew that was it. Yeah. Knew that was it. And here we are later. It's been in our hands for years. Um, we've re -bent, we doubled the size of it. Enlarged the parking lot. Uh, sent people from here to the nations of the world and it's almost totally paid for the whole bit and but we had to go through a lot of no's before we got to finally got to the to the yes yeah. 
thank God. Thank oh. God we didn't jump. We didn't get oh. um, antsy. Yeah. We didn't get ahead of God. We didn't just would've go. Would have been we, easy. It would have been. We were we were very we were desperate for our own yeah. place. But I'm telling you, staying with what seemed right and what didn't seem basically what didn't seem right paid off in the end. Oh, paid off in the end. Thank yeah. God. Yeah. Thank God. Couldn't be a better facility for us mm -hmm. than where we are right now. And what he did for us, he'll do for you. Sure. You know, he's no respecter of persons. We've done that with houses. And we've done it with houses. Yeah. We've done it with cars. Our life has centered around yeah. just every day. Any major decision, make sure that you're in agreement, but make sure that you're being led. God yeah. cares about those things. You think, well, why would God, why would I want to bother God with that? Because it matters. Sure. Because he has a plan and well, his plan is always better than our plan. Mm. Always better. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's just being led in every aspect of our lives. We, we were looking at houses. What We needed a bigger house. We had our offices in our home. We were looking at houses and we found one that was the perfect house, perfect house. We, and we, we knew we, we had the finances all figured out, everything. But we went to look at it one last time to make a final offer. And it's like, this isn't it. This is, there's a, just a giant no. So, great, great, great. Not a no. Found out later there was a highway going through, almost through its backyard. That property would have been almost worthless. We didn't know it, but God did. Mm -hmm. And then, but the next thing we know, he leads us to a house that's just the perfect house for us. It was wonderful. The, but we had to take some, go through some no's before we finally got to one that's a, a yes. Walked into a house and inside just rose up, uh, I'm going to give this house to you. Well, it didn't mean cash wise. It means he was going to put it in our hands. And he did. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah. So it works. It's it works. Good. It works. It works. Anyway, this is good. This is good. We're believing God with you that you'll be in the right place at the right Amen. time. If you're a child of God, you have the privilege to be led. Yep. You can expect to be led. Yeah. Expect it. Expect God to lead you in decisions, small decisions, big decisions. Um, God cares. God has a plan. Yeah. And we can mm -hmm. find that plan and we can walk out God's plan for our life. Man has a plan, but let me tell you, God's plan is always better. Sure is. And he knows the future better than we know the past. Yeah. He knows where things are going. And he, he knows he, he doesn't try to take anything from us. He tries to get us to the very best, the best situation scenario for our yeah. lives. Yeah. And he knows how to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So. Well, before we before we sign off, say goodbye for the night, we're going to give you a chance to sow. I know many of you uh, on Wednesday nights, you do uh, sow gifts, you sow your offering, you sow your tithe. And so we just want to encourage yeah. you to do that. Um, be faithful to give to God what belongs to God. Bottom line, don't steal from God. Give God what belongs to him. The ways to give are on the screen. And uh, we thank you. We thank you. Father, we pray for everyone under the sound of our voice. I thank you, Father, that you do watch over your word to perform it in our lives. We thank you for your faithfulness. You are a faithful God. You are faithful to lead. You are faithful to bless. And we thank you for it in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Um, just Amen. want to invite you all. This coming Sunday is Easter. So if you don't have a church that you're a part of, Come join us at 10 a.m. right here in Tulsa at World Outreach Church. If you are watching from another city, another state, you don't have a home church, join us. We'll be streaming live. We are going to have ourselves a celebration that Jesus is alive. We're going to celebrate the resurrection and yeah. what that means. And so we invite you to join us this coming Sunday at 6 a.m. We've got some special things planned for the kids. There'll be children's ministry going on. We're going to make sure that if we've got children in there that have never received Jesus, that they will receive Jesus before the morning is over. And so we're excited. I love, 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 love Easter. Always have, always will. So we're inviting you. Come join us. 10 a.m. at World Outreach Church right here in Tulsa, 91st in Memorial. Also, just to throw this out as a reminder, next month we're just about, oh, almost three weeks out. Uh, we are going to have presents, yeah. 24. Mm -hmm. And so we invite you to come and join us. It's going to be Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays, morning and night. We'll be streaming all of the night meetings as well as Sunday morning. But uh, we invite you, come join us. If you're within driving distance or if you're not, uh, we had our prayer con in February, and that was the, one, that was the week that the zero 
temperatures, minus zero temperatures. People couldn't get in. It was crazy. But we're going to gather together again for Presence 24, April 21 through 24. And we invite you to come. Yeah. Be a part. Be a part. Come get in the presence of God with us. In His presence is fullness of joy. And at His right hand are pleasures evermore. So we're just going to spend time in the presence of God. And we invite you to join us. Lots of worship. Lots of word. Yeah. Lots of Holy Ghost. Just going to come and see what God wants to do. That's right. Thank you for joining us tonight. It's been so great sitting with you, being with you in your living room or wherever you are. Thanks for being a part of Spirit Living. And until next week, we will see you soon.